Okay, to conclude this uh, chapter about um, preliminary chapter about uh, first properties of compact operators, um, we want to prove a connection to uh, inverse problems and ill pose problems. And that's the following. If X is uh, an, um, an infinite dimensional Banach space, then compact operators on X have no continuous inverse, which means that uh, the inverse problem for compact operators is ill posed for infinite dimensional vector spaces. Um, to do that, we need uh, to show that uh, we need a small lemma, that's this lemma, and we'll follow, we'll formulate that in the following way. Let X and the Banach space and take a closed subspace of X, could be finite dimensional, then it's always closed. And uh, assume that X, that U is not the whole space. So uh, yeah, it's not the whole space. Um, for X in X, we define the distance of X and uh, that closed subspace U by the infimum of all y in u, d of x and y, and in, in, in the sense that the distance between x and uh, the space, the uh, subspace u. Okay, um, I, the uh, Auris Lemma says that there is an X in X such that the norm of X is one and the distance of X and U is larger than one half. Actually, you can make it as close to one as you want, but one half is enough for us. Okay, uh, we said X was not the complete, uh, U was not the complete space. So there is an element uh, which is in X, but not in U. So let Y be an element of X without U. Now define as D the distance of Y and U. Now if uh, D was zero, then uh, that would mean that uh, y is in the closure of u. But uh, since u was closed, this is the same as u. And we said that y should not be in u. So definitely d is larger than zero. Okay, um, since uh, D is the infimum of the distance, definitely there is a Z in U with a property that the norm of Y minus Z, well, it that approaches D. So definitely there's one which is smaller, where this difference is smaller than 2D. Now we define X as Y minus Z over the norm of Y minus Z. And of course, that means that the norm of X is one. Now take any U in U then the norm of U minus X Find as I did there is the same as the norm of u minus y minus z over the norm of y minus z, which is the same. I take the one over norm of y minus z out, and this is the same 
as the norm of well, norm y minus z times u plus z minus v minus y uh, minus y yes minus y. change the order. Now, this over here, um, u is a vector space, right? It's a subspace. And uh, z is in u, and u is in u as well. So this is an element of u. OK, um, I, oh, I, I took this until this should not be an equal sign. It should be this. Okay, so this is an element in U. So since the infimum of uh, elements in U minus Y norm of that is uh, D, then this is larger or equal to D. Now, Y minus Z, that's smaller than 2D. So this over here is larger than 1 over 2D. Or larger or equal. So all this is larger or equal one half. Okay, and uh, that's exactly what I proposed. Okay, um, we'll use a corollary of this. And I think that's now 220. Let me check, yes, 220. Corollary. Um, let x such that the dimension of x is infinite. So you have an infinite dimensional vector space. Let um, and uh, yeah, and I claim that then there is a sequence xn in x with the following property: the norm of xn is one, and the distance of all elements in that sequence larger or equal one half. Okay, uh, so for the proof, well, just take x0 to be any element of x with norm 1. Then define u0 as the span of x0. Now, this is a finite dimensional subspace. It's definitely closed. And uh, so we can apply what we just proved. Uh, and this says that there is an x1 in x with the property that uh, the norm of x1 is 1 and the distance of x1 and u naught, and in particular d of x and x1, uh, x and x0, uh, excuse me, is larger or equal to one half. Now, of course, we can go on with that. We said u1 as the span of x0 and x1, which now means there is an x2 in x. Well, with the same properties. And since the uh, distance of x2 to u1 is uh, well, larger or equal to 1 half, um, we have then also d of x0 and x2, and d of x1 and x2 are uh, larger than, larger or equal to 1 half. So, uh, yeah, it has all the properties we need, and we can continue with that as infinite. Um, Ah, oh, yeah, there's one thing I didn't look at. We require, there's one requirement for this lemma, and that is that x is not equal to the whole space. So could this happen here? 
that uh, one of these uk's which I define are actually x. No, it can't because I require that dim x is infinity. So never any uh, none of these can actually be x. So all of the requirements we need above are satisfied. Okay, so with that sequence, we can show that the inverse uh, of a compact operator, if it exists, is not continuous. So corollary. First again, let, um, let's assume that we have an infinite dimensional vector space. And of course, as usual, k goes from x to y and so on. Let k from x to y compact. Then k has no continuous inverse. which means that KU equals G is opposed. Okay. Um, yeah, choose for the proof. Choose the sequence. Does it go with a double O, I think? choose xn as above, as in uh, 2.20, which means that the norm of xn is 1 and the distance between two elements is larger than 1 half. Um, then, uh, as in 2.20, yes, and define yn as k x n. Okay, now um, obviously uh, x n is bounded, right? So the norm is one. So y n, uh, so uh, y n has a convergent subsequence. Since a, since k is compact, right? So, um, and we call that subsequence y n again, without loss of generality. We assume that y n actually is the convergent sequence, is the convergent subsequence. Okay. Um, now we have that the norm of y n is smaller or equal to the norm of k times the norm of xn. Do I actually need this? No, I think I don't need this. Um, let's say, let's see whether we do. Uh, um, yn is now, yeah, I, I don't need this, I'm sorry. Um, assume that k to the minus one exists. I mean, if it, if it doesn't exist, then uh, we're done anyway. So let's look at k to the minus, uh, that, um, what is k to the minus one yn? Well, if, it's ex if it exists, then obviously it must be xn. Okay. Now, um, k minus uh, yn converges. Let's assume that it converges to some y. So k, k to the minus 1, uh, yn, so uh, yn converges to y, but k to the minus 1, uh, uh, 1 yn is xn, and uh, we just noted that this is definitely not a Cauchy sequence. because all elements have distance at least one half. 
So k to the minus one yn does not converge, but yn converges, which means that k to the minus one, if it exists, is not continuous. And this for us actually is a very, very important lemma, although a uh, corollary, um, although it seems very simple, but um, this will, this already means that many, many operators we are looking at uh, are actually compact, uh, um, are, all, are connected to ill-posed problems. So all the integral equations that we look at, if we, uh, may, uh, if we, excuse me, if we take k as a compact integral operator, then the uh, inverse either does not exist or it is uh, it is not continuous. So all of these are ill, uh, Ill post problems, improperly post problems. So uh, yeah, that's um, so these are the subjects we'll be looking at in the rest of the lecture. <laughs>